Hey guys, this is me Akash here for Weapon Sharma Biology Tutorials. So today I'm going to start this new chapter that is Biodiversity and Conservation and we are on the first topic that is concept of biodiversity. Okay, so starting with the introduction first, let's understand what biodiversity is. So for that, let's break it down into two major parts. The first one being bio and the second one is diversity. First one bio, we all know bio means life and diversity means variety. So the variety of life forms which you see is called biodiversity. So let's dig down a deep into it to get that. So I am using an example of schools out here as this example is correlatable. So let's assume that there are two types of schools, type 1 and type 2. There are two schools. The first school concentrates on academia and the second concentrates on your activities part. Academia, there are further varieties. For the first variety concentrating on uh, educating about modern subjects like foreign languages and stuff and second concentrating on your traditional subjects like sanskrit or astrology stuff so basically concentrating on traditional stuff in activities section the, the schools that concentrate on activities more they first one contribute to like educating about modern sports like your pool horse riding swimming and all the second one contributing about your traditional sports uh, like your basic ones the football football hockey and cricket so if you see the term is same school but but there is diversity in this common term school so if you correlate it to your bio part so we all are living organisms right you plants microorganisms we all are living organisms but there are differences in us as contributing diversity so the life forms which you see the variety of life forms which you see is called biodiversity so the basis if you break down it into so it's about similarity and differences the more similarity you have the less biodiversity it is the more differences are there in life forms the more biodiversity is so similarity is more biodiversity is less the differences are more the biodiversity is more so now let's talk about how this diversity came into picture okay so if you see environmental factors are there different areas have different pressure rainfall conditions sunlight they receive all the other contents out there these comes under environmental factors and then they affect what we call habitat habitat in which the organisms live and the needs of those flora and those fauna are different so that they adapted differently so from a single cell the whole life forms arise and during a specific time like millions of years of evolution took place and then there was differences between organisms which gave form to this variety of life forms that is biodiversity so let's talk about the definition the variety of all living or things and the system that connects them and now it includes microorganisms animals different type of plants and genetic information they contain and the ecosystem also that's also a part of biodiversity now this has this is a result of millions of years of evolution so now let's talk about the types of biodiversity which are of the genetic diversity species diversity ecosystem diversity and the fourth one is your global biodiversity that is the mega one let's talk about genetic diversity so you have a different genetic makeup i have a different genetic makeup individual third fourth fifth all have a different genetic makeup but what is common in us? We belong to the same species, that is Homo sapiens. But we have a different genetic pool. So the variety here, variety of genes out here, constitutes genetic level of diversity. So the genetic diversity is the variety of genes within the species. We all belong to the same species, all human, Homo sapiens. But there's a variety of genes out there. So this is making up genetic diversity. So this means uh, means a species may have different population, each having different genetic composition. And to conserve genetic diversity, different populations of the species must be conserved. For example, I am having a unique gene. You have you all are having a different gene. So in order to conserve this genetic pool, we need to conserve. In order to conserve the genetic diversity, we need to conserve those individuals. So the second one is species diversity. Species as we all know is a group of living organisms that are capable of exchanging genes or interbreeding. So the organisms that can interbreed 
comes under the same species and the variation the variety in this species pool comes under uh, is called species diversity for example i come under homo sapiens like we human beings the dogs are different birds butterflies insects all these are different species right so the variation the variety which exists between us comes under species diversity so this includes your smallest one like amoebas bacteria to the large ones like blue whale or elephants like which exist on our planet this comes under species diversity so this includes your plant fungi insects fishes reptiles amphibia all those stuff comes under species diversity so this is the second level now comes under uh, we'll cover a bigger picture that comes under ecosystem diversity so you see deserts are different the climatic conditions in the desert and the climatic conditions in the arctic circle antarctic circle cold deserts and all are different the tropical rainforest is different the temperate rainforest is different the grasslands are different each is having each one having their own uh, flora fauna environmental conditions so this is making up different ecosystems and the differences in these ecosystems the diversity in this ecosystems is comes under ecosystem diversity so this is the variation in the ecosystem within a geographical location and its overall impact on human human existence so it is the variation of ecosystems found in the region or variety of ecosystem over the whole planet so this is the largest scale of biodiversity the scale is quite huge and this deals inside it deals the species and genetic diversity so now comes the major one like the global diversity which covers the whole planet the measure of biodiversity on the on planet earth defined as the total variability of life forms all the life forms the large the biggest picture like the measure of biodiversity of the whole planet covering the whole planet comes under global biodiversity so in 2014 it was estimated that it's about 1.5 million but now it's like close to around 7 million diversity now the question arises it's like why not prokaryotic prokaryotes into account we are ranging from amoeba to elephants as i said right so but we are not taking prokaryotes into picture why so the conventional taxonomic methods are not sufficient for identifying those microbial species for example we you know about the five kingdom system like the four four kingdom five kingdom system so what were the bases like the phenotypic characters might be different the areas in which might be different so we that those work under conventional taxonomic methods but now when it comes to microbial species they are not at all uh, like sufficient enough to identify those so we are not taking prokaryotes into picture the second is like these microbes these uh, microbial species all cannot be cultured in the laboratory condition and these one studied one by one further if we try to get into like microbial uh, biochemical and molecular biology techniques to identify those the diversity would be immense it would be into millions so just taking a prokaryote and the diversity would be into millions so that's why that's the reason we're not taking prokaryotes into account when it comes to diversity measurement so that's kind of it i hope you like this video and uh, we'll continue in the next lesson till then keep watching vipin sharma biology tutorials thank you